Hello everybody, welcome to Random Pubcast number 9. I am your host, Cola Blue. Of course, as always, I have not changed yet, and I don't plan on changing, so it's still me, Cola Blue, you're stuck with me. But anyway, I'm just jumped into a random pub game, uh, as always, with these random pubcasts. Well, I mean, the title's Random Pubcast. So these are random pubs. I do not know anybody in these games. Hopefully, one day I'll see a name that I remember. Hopefully, I see another game with at Sexy Bamboo. That was a very fun game. I'm referring to game number six. Uh, you guys, or sorry, random pubcast number six. Uh, you guys should definitely check that one out. That was really good. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but just know it was a really action-packed game. I'm pretty sure my casting was pretty terrible, but it's still a really interesting game to watch. Um, if anything, at least look up the match ID so you can watch it for yourself. I highly recommend that game. Uh, anyway, enough plugging my own stuff. Let's go on to the game. Uh, the game's loading up. I need to switch over my overlays before I forget, because if I know, I know if I forget, I'm gonna be very angry at myself. Also, let me switch to free camera. Is there any broadcasters with no broadcasters? Fog of War, cool. Spectator chat. Let's turn that off. All right, everything looks like it's all set up. So you're in full screen. Yes, I am waiting for the last person to load. Blue Corona. So while he's loading up, I'm gonna take a sip of my very soothing tea. Cool it off because it just recently burnt my tongue. It actually hurt a lot. It was like 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 it was, it was like I took it too big of a gulp on something very hot and then it's just like the fire was going all in my all in my mouth and stuff I was like ah I couldn't spit it out because I already started drinking it. it was like ah. it was painful I survived I survived my voice is still intact for all I know but anyway uh, looks like we got it all picked sweet <clears throat> and everybody's picking pretty fast so I'll be able to introduce one of, I'll be able to introduce the diary team right right on the get-go ST is pretty good. It's actually good for your voice. So I've heard. Or so I think I've heard. Anywho, enough sipping of my tea. Just gonna wait for these guys to finish picking. Um, something to fill the time, I guess. Uh, oh! Guys, if you haven't seen the rest of my videos, please check them out. Please, please, please check them out. Um, views definitely help out. I love going to YouTube, seeing that I have one more view than I had 10 minutes ago. I'm a little, what's the word, OSTD? That's not the word. OCD, jeez. I'm a little OCD when it comes to that. I just want to see my numbers go up and up. I currently have one subscriber. Big shout out to Rylan. Uh, he's my very first subscriber and my only subscriber. And I take pride in that. He's actually one of my friends on Steam. I play Dota with him a lot. I actually... Oh, I, I, I wouldn't say coached him, but I, I've taught, showed him a few things. I showed him a few of the inner workings of the game. And he said thank you by subscribing to my channel. So, big shout out to him. So, you guys should definitely subscribe to me because I hope to one day throw out contests and stuff. As far as I know, <clears throat> the closest one I can think of, uh, if I ever do throw out a contest. Like, a, if you comment on this video, blah, blah, at blah, blah, times or something, then... You'll win this free game from Steam. I'll eventually start doing those once I get more subscribers. I think I'm going to start doing it at 10. So once I get 10 subscribers, say, yeah, uh, as soon as I hit the 20 mark, I'm going to do this, give this free thing away. I don't know. It all depends on the money situation, which is not really all that good for me at the moment. But anyway. All right, enough of me blabbering about future stuff. Just know that in the future, giveaways will be going. Just not yet. Anyway, let me go ahead and introduce the Radiant side. Even though I said I'll introduce the dark side, let me go ahead and introduce the radiant side. Since Last Hero is playing that Lashrec, <coughs> alright, so we got Last Hero obviously playing that Lashrec. <laughs> we have, oh, excuse me. We have Florin, Florin, Florin playing that Bloodseeker. We have something in a language that I cannot pronounce playing that Huskar. And we have Blue Corona, Blue Corona's playing that Tidehunter. You with your devilishly toaster PC. And we have Smiley on that Bane. Just don't tell myself that. Uh, we have... Is Ursa... Or is Ursu... Ifrut? I don't know. It's probably... Probably German. Or not German. Probably some language. I don't know. Don't know. Uh, we have him on Beastmaster on the die side. And also on the die side we have Nick on the Batrider. We have Simba. Simba's on the Earthshaker. Pretty boy. He's on that uh, Troll Warlord. And <laughs> and Gunzo is on fire. He's getting burned by that Huskar, the searing arrows. 
Coast Guard doing a little bit of harassment early game, and Beastmaster's actually getting really low. Oh my gosh, almost missed the first death or first blood. Looks like he will not be going down. The bottle that he has has been paying or has saved his life actually. I honestly, would prefer him see go, some, go something else besides bottle first. Now the reason why you can see Bane go so aggressive on somebody on one Beastmaster at the moment is because when you go bottle, once you're out of those charges, you out you are out of region. So Bane, Bane is basically making Beastmaster pay for having zero region now. Uh, all he's going to do is just run in and harass the crap out of him and then potentially get a kill. His blessing could throw, him throw him the rage on him. I think it will be in, it will be enough to kill him. Uh, he will be going down shortly. There we go. First blood goes down. The way blood rage worked, blood rage lasts for I think six seconds. Wait, hold on. Tidehunter is getting pretty low too. So many people are going pretty low around here. Lashak is going to be around the corner. He's going to throw out the stun so that Tidehunter can get away. No, he's going to throw the edict and they might be able to get Earthshaker out, out, out of this. Yeah, there he goes, run away, so uh, Centaur, oh, sorry, Centaur, Troll Warlord throws out the, throws out the axes, but it doesn't matter, Tidehunter still goes down to, oh wait, no, Tidehunter goes down to the Warlord, that's pretty good, uh, Earthshaker doesn't die, that's who it was, Earthshaker's the one who's about to die, and here's Tidehunter, he comes back instantly, uh, he did not buy back, it's just the cooldown, or when you're level 1, or level 2, the respawn time is like 3 seconds or something like that, so he's able to come back and help get a kill on the Earthshaker, I think, no he didn't, I was about to say, I think Earthshaker killed him, and he killed Earthshaker, so it's a nice little trade-off. But anyway. Meanwhile, Batrider's getting low too. Okay, Batrider's in the jungle. So we're having a jungle Batrider. I'm not complaining. But anyway, like I was saying on the mid lane. So because Beastmaster only has a bottle, he doesn't have really he doesn't really have any region. Or sustainable region. As opposed to Tango's. He has some pretty expensive region at that. So what uh Bane and Beastmaster can or what Bane and Bloodseeker can do is they can harass him a lot. And then they can just go back and just use their own region. Now, and it's actually kind of funny now that I say that Bloodseeker doesn't really have any region, but he doesn't need any just as long as he can get his last hits. He has a poor menstrual and boots and a coiling blade. I'm pretty sure he got the coiling blade and the shield first. Hope he didn't go boots first. But anyway, um, so Beastmaster pretty much doesn't have any region until he goes picks up another bottle. We got two people in the jungle. We got Bane and. We got Bane and Lashrak all up in the jungle trying to disrupt the Beastmaster. Here's. Here's. Uh, his Beastmaster trying to do what he can to get them out of the jungle. His Earthshaker, they might be able to convert this into a kill on the Lashrak. I think Lashrak is a little bit too far. Beastmaster trying to get his man up so he can throw more axes. He will throw an axe. It will be enough to get the kill. And they, they bring Bane pretty low. Oh, Berserkers. What is it? Blood Rage. Blood Rage. The way Blood Rage works is it ticks for 20 damage for 6 seconds. So 20 damage every second. That's 120 damage. If I did my math right. That's 120 damage on the Beastmaster, so Beastmaster did go down first blood because of that Blood Rage damage. Which is actually pretty funny because Blood Rage only does 20 damage. And the only thing that changes every level is how long it lasts. And the percentage of the damage it increases on you. But anyway, uh, we see Beastmaster gonna go ahead and start bottle crowing. Why is- whoa, what crow, what are you doing? Okay, he's trying to manage his items. There we go, he's item management. No blood for you. Beastmaster is going to go ahead and start bottle crowing. His supports bought him that upgraded courier, so he can in fact do that. He will be a little bit more survivable now that now that he has a bottle coming back and forth to him from the fountain in between those runes. Meanwhile, Batrider is low. He's in. He's going back home. Uh, Batrider has a bottle of his own, so he doesn't really have much regen in the jungle. He just has those charges that he can get, and it's actually going to be more difficult for him because Beastmaster is going to be picking up all these runes or as many runes as he can, so that he can fill up his bottle. And I was just about to say, does Earthshaker have a bottle too? But anyway, it look, look, looks like they're going to go ahead and wait for Bane to come around the corner. Bane's in Viz. I'm not sure why Beastmaster did not pick up that bottle, or pick up that Invis rune. Oh, he doesn't have his bottle. Okay. So Beastmaster did not have his bottle. He was trying to wait for his rune, or his bottle to come back to him before he picked up the rune. But Bane just said, no, bro. No, none of that. I'm just going to take the rune for myself and go back home. So Bane being a little mean on that. Uh, meanwhile, Bounty Hunter taking a lot of harassment from Huskar. Is Bounty, no, Bounty Hunter has one... Uh, healing cells left, so he has some region left, and Huskar, Huskar is just dominating his lane so far. Uh, we, oh man, I need to bring that up. Take a look at the last hit to deny, as we can see Huskar is definitely dominating this lane. Uh, typically in the suicide lane, ba um, Bounty Hunter doesn't really get any last hits anyway. At least when I play Bounty Hunter, I get like zero last hits. Not because I'm bad at farming, but because it's hard to get it's hard to get last hits when you're going against two people that or somebody ranged. Is not yours to offer. Excuse me. Take a sip of my tea. But anyway, so Huskar is really, uh, really taking advantage of this lane. He's getting all the farm that he can. He's getting every last hit by the looks of it. This is 35. Sorry, 33 plus 14. <clears throat> I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the numbers real quick. 35 plus 15. That's 40. 
50, 50 last hits. And it's been about 50 minutes, so he's hit a, he's hit about every coup wave, every coup wave, he's killed about half of them. Every single creep. Anyway, uh, Tidehunter goes down. Upon the oh, sorry. He's hit roughly about half of them, because that would have been about 100 creeps every time. Or 100 creeps after 5 minutes, is that true? No, it's only 4 creeps, so... Whatever, this math involved and stuff. Your desolation and the world. Anyway, Lestrat comes down to help kill with the help, help kill the bounty hunter. He throws down the diabol by diabolical edict. So even though even if bounty hunter goes in this, he will still will be getting hit by that. Uh, meanwhile, Hustler's gonna go ahead and destroy this tower. I mean, he actually no, he's not gonna destroy the tower. Do a lot of damage to the tower. We got a TP coming in from the beast map. No, it's not beast master. From the bounty hunter. Bounty hunter does not want this tower to go away uncontested. There's not really much he can do against Husker. I mean. Uh, the fight that I missed, Huskar basically leaped onto him and Lestrak was there to help out. I'm not sure who the other one was who was down here, but it was three people down here. We'll see that in the re- or we'll see that in the replay. We'll re when you have, yeah, you can rewind to see who that was, and then I'll correct it later. Actually, I won't correct it later. Meanwhile, we have Beastmaster- or we have Troll Roller going down to the Bloodseeker. The combination Bloodseeker and Tidehunter because Troll Roller couldn't cast his Whirling Axes. He took every bit of damage that was coming to him. This is actually, now that I think of it, might be one of Troll Wooler's weaknesses, is silence, of course. Because if he cannot cast his Whirling Axes, he cannot make you miss stuff. And if you don't miss stuff, then he's pretty much a sitting duck. Because Troll Wooler has like 0 HP. Okay, 777, whatever. Anyway, Troll TP's back top and Bloodseeker throws the silence right on top of Earthshaker's head. He knows that Earthshaker wants to throw down stun. And there goes the Troll Roller ulti. There goes the stun from Earthshaker. There goes the stun, the follow up stun on the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's trying to do what he can to get away. I don't think he can deny himself just yet. He's And he's out of mana. He has his trades. He has a wand. There you go. He activates the wand. Bane's coming up here for support. Bane probably will. No, he will not. The Warring Axes are just far enough to get the kill. And Earthshaker, Earthshaker got, is the one who got stunned up. And meanwhile, we got a. Uh, we got Tyne Hunter picking up the rune. Somebody picking up the rune. Beastmaster picked up the rune down by it and Tyne Hunter dies. Oh, sorry. Beastmaster picks up the rune, double damage rune up here, and Tyne Hunter gets caught out by the Bat Rider. Bat Rider throws his ulti on top of his head, and everybody's around to get the kill. I think that was a track kill. I'm not too entirely sure. Too entirely sure. And so, so, so many little things going on around the map. Uh, as far as war coverage goes, we got two wards by both, well, one ward on each side at the same exact spot. Other than that, I see no other wards. And we got a little bit of engagement going on. Beastmaster has his double damage. He does not have his ulti. His ulti is on cooldown. But if it wasn't on cooldown, they would probably be going on this Bloodseeker. They actually probably know this. A Bloodseeker just tried to throw his ulti down on the Beastmaster, but Beastmaster got out of vision just in time. Yeah, I think, I think if he would have got hit by that. But no, Husker comes around the corner. Oh my god, Husker jumps in the corner man mode and kills the Earthshaker straight out. Very, very, very good rotation by him. Very good prediction of what the team's gonna be doing next. And this middle tower is being sieged. I think it just, it just might go down. There's only one person really here to defend this, and it's Beastmaster. All he has is a roar. As soon as the sleep runs out, he's gonna throw a roar properly. No, he gets silenced. He gets uh, raptured, and he's stunned. And he's gone. Dyer's middle tower. There's a TP coming in from the Earthshaker. I don't know why Earthshaker. I don't know what Earthshaker is really gonna do. There's a bat right here, and there's a uh, bounty hunter coming in from the backside. Bounty hunter could potentially pick out this extract. He looks like he will. Radiance no, he will not. Oh man, he, sh he should have just went in for the Janata and then for the Invis, but I'm not playing so I can't really make the calls and he saw an opportunity to go for the kill. I think I actually might have done the same thing to be honest, but the more logical thing from a spectator standpoint is for him to do that. Anyway, Bounty Hunter throws on the track so that his uh, partner can get away, but no, it's not enough. There's a Tidehunter ulti and there's also a Dust on top of his head and he goes down. There's also a Dust on his Bat Rider. Bat Rider is trying to do what he can to TP away. He will TP away safely. <laughs> Radiance top tower is under attack. Meanwhile, Troll Roller is trying to push on this top tower, trying to do what he can to help his team out. But there's a fortify, and he knows he's in trouble. He knows there's a rotation coming from the dire, sorry, coming from the radiant side to where he is. I don't know. What, they can't really do much because Bane has no mana, and Tide Hunter. Well, okay, Bane has mana for a brain sap, and Tide Hunter can only gush him and slow him. I guess they could auto attack him to death. Meanwhile, we got Bloodseeker running around in circles. He's trying to see, he's trying to see if he can smell blood. And we're gonna take a look at the items because Bloodseeker has himself a blade mail already. That is that is scary. Uh, Bloodseeker has himself a blade mail, and he also has treads. Uh, there's an urn up on Huskar. There's an urn up on the Shrek. That's not really too efficient Radiant's of items because uh, and Radiant Courier obviously dies. I don't know where, but it died. 
but it's not really too efficient because what, what happens with urns, the way it works, is the urn only goes to one person. But anyway, uh, that aside, uh, Beast Ma uh, Blessing is going to be getting engaged on. He gets stunned up by Earthshaker and the Beastmaster, and he goes down. There was a track kill, so that's more gold for the Dire Side. Alright, like, um, like I was saying with the uh, with the Urn of Shadows, uh, basically the Urn only procs on one person, even though there's two around. So not so if there was, say, say they already had say they had three charges in their urns already, both of them each, and then somebody died right next to, or an enemy died right next to them, only one of them would get one charge, not both of them, and both of them would not get a charge. So there's only one charge to be shared. And I missed the kill. I saw it happening, but I did not move my cursor. Sorry guys, I was, I was busy doing something with my hands. I was busy pointing out numbers, like you guys can see this. Anyway, we got uh, we got Beastmaster invisible. He sees what's going on. His ulti is back up at 30 seconds, but that's never good. Here we go, Beastmaster. Uh, Bloodseeker throws down the Rapture. Or the, no, sorry, Rapture. He throws down the Silence on top of his own stuff so he can do more damage, and he can, he gets randomly killed by the rest of Dire. And meanwhile, there is a Huskar. He was pushing down this bottom tower. Now he's going to TP top so that he can help with this impending push. Bane does not have enough, or Bane is not level six. He does not have his ulti, but he's getting followed by the bounty hunter. He just might go down. He throws down. He throws down the sleep on himself, but he can't. But, but, uh, but Beastmaster cancels out with the abilities. And there goes. Oh my God! So Shrek catches Beastmaster right on the edge, right on the edge of the stun. And there's a roar to slow everybody up. But it doesn't matter. Huskar leaps right to him. And, and Bounty Hunter is trying to get out. Radiant's Meanwhile, top Radiant's top is tower is getting attacked. He's getting siege. It will be going down. I'm not sure what cause Tidehunter ulti is up, so he used it. And Earthshaker's ulti is also up. Uh, he does not have mana for it at the moment, but if he would used it first, he would have he would have been able to stun. But it would have been as long of a stun as uh, his. Q, so that was the right thing to do. He threw out his Q so he Dyer's could stun him for longer. Even though his ulti would have done more damage, his ulti does not do any stun at all. It only does damage. The thing that does the stun whenever he ultis is his aftershock, which would be a 1.5 second stun versus a 1.75 second stun. So, and on top of that, he doesn't really have any. You know, so now Blessing can smell blood. He knows where Batrider is. He's moving extremely fast. He's really trying to get that kill, and Batrider goes down. <laughs> if only Batrider had a four staff. My ST is delicious. Anyway, Bounty Hunter scouting out what he can. He is in Viz. He's running over here. He's trying to see who's over here, what they're doing, and where they're going. He has a haste rune on him, so he's moving like a motorcycle. And now his invis run out runs out. Husker did see him on I think Husker did see just the edge of him going invisible. But I don't know. Husker's gonna go ahead and run around in circles. He might be in a little bit of trouble. The rest of his team is rotate wrapping around the long side of the river. Dyer's Curry has to respond. That's cool enough. And I really like Bounty Hunter's build, uh, build comparative to what the other team has been doing. So basically, if they're building, or if they have a lot of dust and they're building a lot of, or have a lot of sentries placed, a, a good thing to do is only put one point in your shadow walk, so you can only, uh, so you only use your shadow walk for things like escape and stuff. But anyway, that rider points in, he throws on the ulti right on top of Husker. Husker probably will turn around and ulti somebody. I think yes, Husker does have mana for his ulti, but he can't. Okay, there we go. He turns around and ulti to Urshaker. He gets to kill the Urshaker. There's a roll throw down by the Beastmaster. He hits everybody, and here's a troll roll. I just throw out a roll axe, trying to hit what he can. He will be able to kill this Bloodseeker. <laughs> yes, he will be able to kill the Bloodseeker. And they're trying to go for this Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter ulti did get used in that, or did not get used. It was on cooldown, and that fight, it, that fight escalated quickly. Huskar did immediately buy back and he TP it in to see what he could do, but I don't think there was anything he could do. So it begins a siege on the middle tower. Alright, my T is all gone. <sighs> that was actually pretty good. Yeah, uh, Beastmaster has his hawk, so he's scouting out everything in these trees. The hawk will be going down momentarily. Well, okay. There we go. He made himself another hawk. He's gonna follow his hawk. And now Dyer are gonna go ahead and go for Roshan. They can definitely do this because of the Centaur, or because of the Troll Warlord. Troll Warlord <laughs> can prom boost everybody's damage up ex exponentially. It's only level 2 of his ulti, but it gives them an extra 120 attack to <laughs> So now he has an Aegis, and yeah, as you heard, trolls never die. So sad. I wish they did die. But anyway, I hear his Bloodseeker trying to run away. He knows he might be in a little bit of trouble. No, maybe he doesn't. He thinks he's cool. He's gonna go ahead and farm, and oh my god, the boar spots him out. The boar steals his last hits. 
and Dyer are not gonna go ahead and ro are not gonna rotate down bot. They know that Bloodseeker knows he's there. They're gonna instead hang out on top of here. Uh, yeah. That that rider did blink in. He was looking for a lasso, but Bane died a little too fast with the lasso. He gets the lasso on the Huskar. Huskar will be going down. He's gonna be trying to leap, but no, he gets roared up, and there's Hide Hunter with the ult to follow up. And then Huskar gets put to sleep. He jumps in on the troll roller. It's very nice, and he kills the troll roller, but the troll roller has an Aegis. So troll roller will be good. Here's Lestrac trying to run away. Lestrac is running away in very glitchy style. He's able to get away. Huskar did come back up. He did immediately go right back down. I was like, no, Huskar. Uh, Troll Roller did come back up. He is still alive, so he's still good. And there goes the there goes the Lestrac, and there goes the Tide Hunter. Very handily, very handily done by them. Uh, here comes Blessing. He instantly he insta gives the bounty hunter, and now he's going for the. Oh my God! He almost got the kill on the on the. He almost got the kill on the Earthshaker, but no, Troll Warlord showing how powerful he is with that bash. That's only a 10% bash chance, but his attack speed definitely makes up for it. So he can just attack the crap out of you and get a bash almost every other hit. It's ridiculous stuff, people. Uh, speaking of bash, I think Troll Warlord might be the only person who could possibly carry harder than a Faces Void. <laughs> True story. Um, take a foreign Faces Void versus a foreign Troll Warlord, and you take... Well, okay, you can't take ultis out of the equation, but let's just assume they fight when, um, let's just assume they fight when, uh, Faces Void's ulti is on cooldown. Faces Void has no chance of surviving versus a Troll Warlord. I don't think. Now, let's also assume that Faces Void has all of his abilities. He has a butterfly, and so does Troll Warlord. I still think Troll Warlord will still be able to kill Faces. Mainly because, uh, if, if Troll Warlord just throws out a Q, or throws out his Q before uh, Faces hits a BKB or anything, then basically Faces Void is missing all his attacks, which I think if you miss an attack, your bash doesn't go through. I think that's true. I'm not completely sure. I will find out soon, or eventually when I remember, when I go back and listen to this video. But yes, uh... So pretty much... Hold on. Yeah, so, so, so that'll pretty much even out uh, all the dodge chances that faces what we have. But anyway, here we, here we got Bat Rider. He has a four step on him. He brings out the Huskar. He's constantly throwing out the lasses on the Huskar. Very good for him. And Ty throws out the gush so he can slow him down. But I think it's too little, too late. Huskar did go down. And they might, they will, Dyer will be able to take this tower. But no, here's Bat Rider. He wants to be more aggressive. He wants to take more kills. He's trying to help out kill the Tyre. There's a dust used by Bane. He's trying to go for the Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter will be getting stuck inside of the ulti by Bane, but it doesn't matter. A uh, Bane gets stunned up and he dies. And here's Titan to going down to control roller. Troll roller is getting out of control completely. Here's a strike trying to run away. He tried to throw down the stun, but he got disrupted. And, oh my god. Triple kill to control roller. There's a there's a rapture by the Bloodseeker once again on the on the Earthshaker. And uh, Bloodseeker is trying to see what he can do. He smells blood. I'm not sure from where. Okay, he smelt blood from the Radiance Earthshaker. I wonder how long does it last. I don't know how long it lasts after they die. Actually, no, he smells blood from the Troll Warlord. So he's, he's um, getting a ton of vision. He's going in for the Troll Warlord. I think he will be able to get the kill on Troll Warlord if he silences before. But no, the boar scouts it out and Troll Warlord knows what's up. He will be able to activate his uh, Shadow Blade. He does have a Shadow Blade, yes. He will be able to activate his Shadow Blade to get away. If only Blessy can get, could get close enough to do a little bit more damage. And then Troll, Troll Warlord would be 100% revealed. But anyway, now Bloodseeker is just going to go ahead and farm mid. He still smells blood, so he's getting that um, passive, was it passive, passive movement speed. I thought it was attack speed too. He's getting that passive movement speed because of Troll Warlord. The rain, well, actually, no, not because of Troll Warlord. Never mind, Troll Warlord is good. Who's he smelling blood from? He still smells blood. I'm not sure from who. Okay, he's, he's trying to go into Earthshaker. Earthshaker does a lot of damage to himself. Ouch, just got to hurt. Uh, the blade mill on Bloodseeker proving to be useful and Earthshaker trying to do what he can to run away, but no, he gets away. Or he does not get away. And there is, there is Bat Rider with the lasso. He's going to put Bane on the high ground and say, hey Bane, you stay here. Bane instantly throws out the TP, but no, Bat Rider disrupts him. He throws out the flame break and Bane will be dying. Oh no, he will not be dying. He's, um, he's, he does a brain snap. He comes back through. Patrol Roller might be able to get a double kill in this case. He has a BKB. He throws out the, he throws it out. He throws out the Whirling Asses to slow down everybody. I'm oh, sorry, he throws out the Whirling access to make everybody miss their attacks but they had no interest in attacking him so they kept running but anyway i think i think the threshold for this is 50 percent yes it is 50 percent so you're visible okay so when, when you're normal troll roller was 50 percent health so he he was able to so anyway uh, meanwhile tide hunter goes down to the beastmaster 
from the axis, and now we got Huskar trying to go in on the. We got Huskar trying to go in on the Beastmaster. I'm not sure how successful he will be with this Beastmaster. He's running away a little bit too fast. He has what does he have? Okay, he has an Agam Scepter. Okay, Beastmaster did build up an Agam Scepter. I need to check the items very soon. Huskar did leap. Huskar leaped on the Earthshaker. It looks like, and he's trying to go for the kill. He did get the kill on the Earthshaker, but he did lose his life in the in the process. Now here's Troll Warlord trying to go on the track. He will be able to kill on the track. He's going to turn around for the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is trying to do what he can to take the damage, but oh my god, no, the bash is too much. And here's Batrider. Batrider's going in on the Bane. Bane is coming through. Bane did get the kill on the Troll Warlord by the Brain Sap. Via the Brain Sap, but it wasn't enough. And now here we got Bounty Hunter and Batrider trading it back and forth. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if they're going to keep up with this. Now uh, Bounty Hunter noted or Bounty Hunter realized that Barrado would be more efficient at pushing the lane, so he went on and took it back from him. Anyways, so take a look at the items, because I have failed to do that. Uh oh okay, I failed to do that in a while. Bane has arcane boots and a bracer. He's trying to survive. He's still building his magic wand. He will have that shortly, I hope. He has 81 gold. Actually he has it now. He has a recipe in his um inventory, so now he has that. And here he can also take his bracer. He will be doing that soon. Take your bracer. Bane, why you don't take Bracer? Bane, why you don't take Bracer? Okay, whatever. Uh, Bane has that. Oh my god, his Bloodseeker has himself a Skull Basher. So he's, he's going to really try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Troll Warlord. Remember, Troll Warlord has that passive has that passive Bash with his Q. Uh, when he's in melee form. Let me make sure. Yes, he has that passive Bash of 10%. And it stuns. Our Bash duration is 2 seconds. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Skull Bastion has a passive chance for a 25% passive chance of proccing, and it stuns them for 1.5 or bashes them for 1.5 seconds. So in the end, technically Troll Warlord will still win because his attack speed will be skyrocketing because uh, Bloodseeker doesn't really have any attack speed items just yet. I mean, he has a poor man's shield and shreds, but that's about it. Anyways, enough talking about that. Uh, more items looks like. Oh, Trollwell is going to be engaging on this Bloodseeker, trying to see if he, oh my god, he gets the first hit bash. Very lucky for him. Bloodseeker is trying to do what he can to run away. I think he will be able to. He activates the Blade Melt, so that way Troll Warlord will not be doing too much. And, he, and uh, Earthshaker does damage to himself. Now Bloodseeker will be going down, but Troll Warlord has caught himself in a bad position. His um, his BKB will be running out. Bane ulti just to slow him down. Tiny Hunter has his ulti on, on the ready, and he throws it down. They're not able to catch him on the edge of it, but the Shrax Edict is still doing work to him. And now Troll Warlord is going to go ahead and heal up on the Bane. He's going to go ahead and heal up on Tide Hunter. No, he will not be able to. He gets stunned by the Lushrak. And here comes Bounty Hunter around the side doing a lot of damage. Takes down the Lushrak very easily. And now he's going to be going for the Tide Hunter. Yes, he will be going for the Tide Hunter. The Tide Hunter will be going down extremely shortly. Unless somebody can come in to support him. I do not think they will be able to. Uh, Shuriken Toss is to be taken kill. There goes a Shuriken Toss. And he gets dope. Two tracks. Two tracks for Bounty Hunter on that. Very well played on his part. grow rich. Uh, take another look at Indians items because Bounty Hunter has a Desolator. Bounty Hunter has a Desolator. Troll Roller is getting ready to build that Satanic. Oh my gosh, big fight coming out here. Stop fighting people. Huskar dies. Huskar dies to Troll Roller. Just showing that Troll can out carry a Huskar. Not a big surprise because Huskar is not really all that hard of a carry, but he does pop stomp. How do I know? Because I've been stomped by Huskar. I'm not ashamed to admit that, people. I'm not ashamed to admit that it happens. Just like you can get stomped by Carry Dazzle. Now, I wasn't playing the Carry Dazzle, of course. Somebody else was, and they weren't on my team, and it was painful because every time you tried to kill him, he just shallow graved and then walked away. Ugh. Anyways, back to the items before we have a big team fight, which will be extremely shortly. Troll Roller has his BKB, he also has himself up a Helmet of Dominant. Like I said, he's getting ready to build a Satanic and a Shadow Blade. Uh, other big items Batrider, Blink Dagger, Blink Dagger, Force Staff, so he will be able to blink in, lasso somebody, and Force Staff forward like he's about to do now. No, he tried. Okay, yeah, there you go. He blinks in, and he's not able to catch him by just yet. He gets silenced by the Bloodseeker. He force stabs himself forward, and he actually does a lot more damage to himself than he expected to. Bloodseeker able to do a lot of damage from that, and he gets a lot of kill from getting that kill. And now he threw his blade mail. He's trying to trying to do what he can versus the Troll Warlord. He does smell blood, so he is moving a little bit faster. Troll Warlord is visible to him. I think so is Earthshaker. No, Earthshaker is just a little bit too much health, but it doesn't matter. The mid, no, the bottom tower goes down. Due to the bounty hunter, bounty hunter was forcing it about down by. Now we gotta fight in the jungle. Uh, Huskar goes down once again, and here comes Troll Warlord. BKB active. Uh, Tide Hunter doesn't have his ulti for another 20 seconds. He's gonna survive. He just wants to survive for 20 seconds. 
And Troll Roller's ulti or BKB is down, so he's gonna go ahead and disengage from the fight. And there goes the Beastmaster Roar. He wants to go in for the kill on the Bloodseeker, but no Bloodseek. <laughs> Bloodseeker perma stunned. Oh my gosh. So many disables to help out the dire in their endeavors. That is very true. Who is it? We have uh, disables from D Bat Rider. We have disables from Bat um, Beastmaster. We have disables from Earthshaker. And now we got an game to go on a Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker was trying to go in on the Troll Roller, but Troll Roller was saying no to that. And now he still smells blood. He sees him. He's trying to he's trying to turn around and silence him, but he can't get around fast enough. He kept getting bashed too fast. And now here's Bane going down to the troll roller. No, oh my gosh, he comes. Blood, Bloodseeker buys back and instantly gets a kill. Gets an insta gear on the troll roller. Very worth it for him. And here's Bat Rider trying to pull Bloodseeker onto the high ground, but he is not able to. Tide Hunter blows the ulti. He catches the Bat Rider. But at what cost is a big question. And Bat Rider is going to hang out over here. He's trying to see what he can do. I don't think he can do much of anything. Uh, he can only he can scout for his team, and then he'll blink away uh, when the time when he needs be, or when the time needs be. Anyway, Beastmaster has a blink down. He also has a roar. They're just waiting for the team to get over here so they can engage. This will be a perfect engagement for them. Or if they just chill out here for a few more few more seconds, 40 more seconds, uh, Bat Rider can blink in. And Beastmaster, or sorry, Bat Rider can blink in, pull, or get a last sale, pull somebody over. But no, Beastmaster's gonna go for a roar. He goes for the solo roar. Bat Rider blinks in. He throws down the Firefly. He throws on the. Ooh, he tried to throw it on the casket. Or he threw it on the Flame Bake, but I think it was a little over. A little over. But anyway, and Bane still the sleep from Bat Rider, so that he can survive for a little bit. Here's the shot. Try to do what he can, but no, he goes down for the Flame Break. And this. And Bat Rider goes away laughing. Uh, I think Beast, no, Beastmaster did not go down in that engagement. That's very good. Aghanim Scepter, extremely useful in Beastmaster. Beastmaster is now officially the walking ulti. All he wants to do is just blink in, ulti you, throw axes, and then run away. <laughs> because that's really all he can do. But that's all he needs to do to get his kills. As you can see in that uh, engagement right there, even though it just supports, all he had to do was just jump in, roar, and then Bat Rider came in with the extra damage. He threw axes, and then they eventually got the Shrek. They did not get the Bane, however, because Bane stole the sleep. But even still, they were able to get the kill on the track, so that's all that matters. They made something out of nothing. Meanwhile, items are still calling for me to be called out. Uh, Bounty Hunter has himself a BKB and a Desolator. He is very, he has a lot of farm, or he has enough farm. So he has quite a bit of farm, especially considering his early game. He was pretty much getting uh, manhandled in his lane. Here we go. We got Bat Rider blinking in. Bat Rider blinking in four step forward, and Bane is going to be getting taken out extremely quickly. That is some <laughs> so annoying. I agree. And here's Beastmaster with the roar. The range on the roar is increased with the Agus of Septic. He's able to catch Bloodseeker on the outside edge of that. And Bloodseeker does get tracked Radiant's down. The middle tower does go down. There might be an engagement me. anyway here. I do not agree with this. Tide Hunter ulti is not up. And Huskar keeps dropping down too fast. Huskar needs to finish up his BKB so he can survive in these fights. It says diving tier 1 at 3 minutes with dust is annoying. I agree. So like, like I was saying earlier, Bounty Hunter had a really difficult lane, but despite all that, he's come back into this game. He's contributing to his team. I was going to take a look at the gold graph while these guys are doing Roshan extremely fast. Dude, Jesus. His attack speed is what? 0.31. I think that's max attack speed. Okay. Roshan has fallen to the dial. I think that's max attack speed. 570. Oh. But anyway, uh, the gold graph is dipping heavily in the favor of Dyer. No big surprise. Not only do they have a Bounty Hunter, but they're winning their team fights. So that just goes to show how well things are working out for them. Uh, experience graph, XP graph, as always, is really negligible because the longer the game goes on, the closer it's going to converge to zero. But even with that said, that is quite a lot of XP to have. Or it's, it's quite a big discrepancy in XP at this point in the game. As mainly from Troll Warlord not dying, getting all his kills. And actually, let's look at the kills, death, and assists. Kills, death, and assists. You can see Troll Warlord has 21 kills. Dear Jesus, Troll Warlord, Troll Warlord has almost half of his team's kills, which is very good. That means his team is not still in KS in them. Kill still in them. But even, but I mean, that's just a lot of kills. That's ridiculous. That just shows you how much he's, how much farm he's been getting. He has Aegis, he has a Yashi, he has a BKB, he has a Shadow Blade. I wonder what he's going to be building next. It's probably Dyer's a Satanic. Tower is under it attack. could be a Sanjin Yasha. Sanjin Yasha works really, really well with him, especially when he's attacking so fast. And he, if he gets that proc... Or he, he gets to proc that uh, Sanj greater main more often. But anyway, uh, we got these guys going in. Uh, there's Huskar. He's tracked up. He's in a little bit of trouble. He has a BKB. Here's Bat Rider. He's throwing out the lasso. Even if Huskar would have BKB, it didn't matter. He still would have got caught out. And there's Huskar activating the BKB. Tidehunter jumps out and throws the ulti. 
Too much is going on. I don't know what to focus on. Troll Warlord is ulted up. He's getting attacked, auto attacked by everybody. He does go down. Aegis is popped. Um, more stuff going on. Huskar goes down. No big surprise there. Troll Warlord is trying to get out with his life intact, but uh, yeah, he will be able to get out his life intact. Earthshaker blinks him. Beautiful, beautiful ulti by Earthshaker. He's able to get three in that. The Echo is doing a lot of damage, and his Bloodseeker is going down. Perma Bash by Troll Warlord. Bloodseeker was trying to do like I think Bloodseeker was trying to deny himself again, but he was getting bashed a little too hard by the Troll Warlord. Ridiculous, ridiculous attack speed coming out of this guy. That's 403. Just to let you guys know, whenever Ursa activates his overpower, uh, his I think his attack speed gets maxed out. But uh, it gives it. I think when they write it, they say it gives him 400 attack speed. I think 400 is the fact that you can attack, or maybe it's 500. I don't know. But just know that he's attacking pretty darn fast. Uh, here's his bat rider jumping into the di fountain diving, trying to get a lasso. But I mean, his lasso is on cooldown. He's just trolling. He buys himself a ghost sector. Yeah. Ghost sector is his way on out, and Ben almost actually almost kills him. Uh, meanwhile, we got Hawk around the side. He's just scouting out. Earthshaker going in, blinking out. Everybody's trolling. Why not? And here's Huskar. He's ready to kill somebody. His BKB is up in one second. He probably will dive. Trollwola. Trollwola just switching back and forth from range to melee form Radiant's because he can. Is under attack. And here's Earthshaker going away. Earthshaker's going to go ahead and blink away. They are smoked up. And there's not really much of anything going on now. I mean, Radiant pretty much know the game is over for them. So they're going to just help, go ahead and chill out in the fountain. Not let their stats get a lot of tarnish on them. Because usually uh, towards the end of the game, especially when the other team is really pushing to your lane, or into your base and just hanging out, uh, a lot of people just go out and try to do something. But Okay, here's Huskar. Huskar's coming around the corner. He might be able to get into kill, kill on Troll Roller. No, Troll Roller has just a little too much damage. He attacks a little bit too much fast. He almost got the kill on the Troll Roller. No, with the assist from everybody else, Beastmaster Roar slowed him down. The Bash has slowed him down. And every three people go down in a matter of seconds. I think Troll Roller got all three of those kills. Yes, he did. He got a triple kill. I hate pretty boys. This is why you hate me. Why you hate me? He's not that pretty. <laughs> and here's Troll Warlord still here with the low HP. He does have himself a crystal, so that does explain why they went down so fast. And here's Titan to blinking out. He's going for the ulti. He might be able to kill Troll Warlord if he knows he's there. He can turn on a gush. He's gonna turn on a gush. He gets the kill on Troll Warlord, but it doesn't matter. He will not be making out alive. And Troll Warlord can just buy back if he really wanted to. There goes the buyback from Troll Warlord. Here comes Titan Hunter. Titan Hunter runs back into the base. He gets roared by the Beastmaster, and he's still there. He's still alive. That's all that matters. He gets pushed out of the base. He's trying to run. He makes it out alive, oh my gosh. He gets the pick up on the Troll Warlord, he gets the massive amount of gold that he got. Okay, I'll look at it later. Um, Batrider goes after his blinks in and activates the lasso, gets to pull out on the Tidehunter, but not able to get a kill. Meanwhile, meanwhile Husker jump, leaps on the Beastmaster, go, trying to go in for the kill. Bane gets the ulti on top of his head, and Batrider trying to do what he can to help him out. Meanwhile, the Greater Hawk is just chilling. There's also a sentry ward placed by the dire side and an observer ward. They don't want the radiant to put sentries here. Uh, wow, really? That's a weird observer ward. Anyway, Bounty Hunter gets picked off. He was trying to take on Bloodseeker 1v1. I don't think that worked out too well in his favor. But there's an observer ward placed by the dire side and right here in their attack. base and they're not killing it. I don't, I don't understand. That, that should be within vision range, shouldn't it? Maybe it's not. We won't farm, let us in shore. Because these guys want to get on about their life. Is under attack. I assume. Meanwhile, Centaur is going to do kill more stuff. And there's Batrider reneging on the promise saying, We won't farm, promise, let us push. And there's a double BKB, Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker activated Ravage on the. Um, on the uh, sorry, on the Troll Roller, but uh, whatever. I said, let us let us in, base dies. WTF. Pro deny. Somebody got denied. Who denied? Oh my god, Blessinger committed suicide. Very nice. Blessinger was able to suicide with his blood rage, which is actually pretty difficult to do. That means he activated it. He activated it and practiced 20 damage right before he was about to die to the Troll Warlord. And saying, guys, please end it. And they're just kind of hanging around. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Here we go. Troll Warlord is going to go ahead and end it. He activates the ulti, attack the tower, auto attack the tower. Radiant's he will be able to take down this tower pretty handily. And there goes that one. 
get stuck. Okay, here's the other. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. And there goes the ancient. The ancient will be going down from the from the radiant side. This will be a victory. This will be GG. Victory by the dire. And there's the roar on the titan. The titan's gonna ulti, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> there was a there was a PKP active on Trollola. Trollola is finally down. He does not have money for her. His buyback is still on cool down. There's Earthshaker jumping in with the ulti. I don't think he caught up. He kind of killed anybody with that. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh. That was a pretty interesting game to watch. As we can see, Troll Warlord gets out of hand pretty quickly. Um, he, I still think he can outcarry Faces Void. I want to see that matchup one day. Hopefully, I will see it on my random pubcast. But it's all a thing of chance. Anyway, uh, my name was Cool Blue. I just brought you guys a random pubcast. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This is the last one of the day. Um, please leave criticisms in the comments. Any and all criticism criticism are welcome, but please make them constructive because Destructor doesn't solve much of anything. And that is it for today, so I'll see you guys whenever.